AFTV we were both there last week at Anfield. Yeah. Come out of the ground, proud of the performance. Really good defensive rear guard action performance. But today, I don't know. We just didn't look at the races today, did we? I think everything we saw last week, we lacked today. So the intensity, the application, the desire, the togetherness. You know, looking at Why? it. Why? I don't know. I don't know if the occasion was too big for them. I'm, I'm, I'm not mm. sure. I, I'm, you know, there are some challenges that you get with young squads, and that might be that might be one of them. Um, I mean, Liverpool set up quite well today. I know everyone said about like getting we got the ball in wide areas, but you know they defended with a really narrow midfield three, which forced the ball into those wide areas, which then meant that they were then able to kind of combine on Saka and combine on Martinelli. So mm. we didn't have quality on the ball in the areas where you need to kind of get people where you can hurt teams. We want to be getting Erdegaard in those dangerous positions. And actually he was the one, because of his deeper position today, trying to get on the ball and make things happen. And in some respects he was, but once he gets the ball and then tries to make things happen, he wasn't able to get the ball into Smith Rowe and into Saka and into Martinelli in those dangerous positions. And then when the ball breaks down in the transition, Liverpool, kill, they kill you. It kills you. Mm. Absolutely kills you. Um, you know, he had Tommy Asu. Yeah, Tommy Asu didn't have didn't have a great day today. Uh, understandable, understandable. But you know, then again, you're looking at the bench and going. But there's no right no, back on the bench. No, exactly. And that's you know, it's a massive ten or eleven days for the club, um, not just for this season, but you know, for the next two or three seasons. Because really, you're looking at it going. Yeah, this is probably the best chance, get, like you said, to try and get back into the Champions League. You want to take the Carabao Cup because of when it's placed in the season. You look at Man City and what they've done when they've won it over the last few seasons. They've used that as a springboard and a catapult to go on and then a 10 and 11 game run because the confidence is high. You wonder how they was how they react to you know how they react to today and going into the Burnley game. And, you know, Burnley are going to come and realistically they're going to fancy themselves. You know, they're not a great side, but. They're going to sit here and yeah, they're going to yeah, they're going to come in having had so many games cancelled. They're going to come in relatively fresh. We're on a bit of a downer. Numbers are short. God knows what the bench That's is going to be. It's a must-win game. It's a it's a mm. it's a must-win game. Every, you know, every, every, every game, game every now. Yeah, every game. And that's it. Yeah, because you know this it. is all we got to play for now. And in, is... some, and, in, look, and in some respects, some of it is still in our hands. We still have to play Chelsea again. We still have mm. to play uh, West Ham again. We still have to play Tottenham. So, so in some respects, it's in our hands. It's just a case of. Mentally, are we strong enough? Physically, have we got enough players, and are you know, and are the play, are those players good enough? Because yeah, look, don't get wrong, you know, in my head, I can only assume that given all the players that have gone out, there's a plan to bring players in because it seems really daft to send out the players that have gone out with no plan. And in fairness, they didn't let us down in the summer lot, so I've got a bit of faith. But actually, I need to see some real movement and some real intention in the next 10 or 11 days that will give me an indication as to what it is that they've got in store. So what do you think we need? I think we need a fullback. I think we need a centre midfielder, if not two. I, would, it wouldn't hesitate, I wouldn't hesitate to bring in two central midfielders. Um, I think we need another winger. And I think we need a centre forward. I don't think we're going to get all of those in January. And that and no issue. chance. No, and that's and no really. And that's the issue. So the issue is, where are you sacrificing? Because wherever you are sacrificing, see the thing is as well, as well about bringing in so many players is <laughs> when they're going to yeah, play. No, well, because remember, there's only one game a week now as well. There's no, you can't say, all right, yeah, uh, you no, play in the no, FA no, Cup or no, no, you no. can play. That's it. Yeah. One game. And, that, look, and that's the situation that we found ourselves in. So actually, if you look at Maitland-Niles and the reasons he went out, it's because actually when everyone was fully fit, he wasn't getting minutes. No it, yeah. um, so actually, you know, to, to have a big but squad... they could have sent him out later on in the window. That was the that issue. That was the weird one. That, and we, you, that you know. was the issue. That was the issue. And, and some, you know, we spoke about Arteta's mm. maybe naivety and experience. And, you know, when he came out and said that he let Maitland-Niles go because, you know, he, he had a, he'd broken a promise to him and all those sorts of things. But there's, don't get me wrong, there's sentiment... But actually, you're a manager of a football club and sentiment sometimes has to go out the window and you have to just say to him, look, well, you can go any time in January. Let us get through this period. You're going to get minutes in that period. And then wherever you go, you'll go there fit and fresh. Mm. You know, he went to Roma. He's, you know, he's been featuring. He's been doing, doing all right. But, you know, you ask if that's a bit of naivety on Arteta's part to actually let someone go that early on the basis of sentiment, on the basis of just going, do you know what, he's a good lad and I made a promise and I've broken the promise. Do you think this transfer window is like... It's pivot? huge. It's massive. Mm. It's absolutely massive. Because it really sets an intention to everybody in relation to what we intend to do, what we want to do. We've sent players out. We've sent players out. We've you know, terminated Class and Ash's contract. We've done a number of things that have kind of freed up spaces for people to come in. If they now don't get those people in, 
there's a you know there's real questions being asked from from me um and i've i've got faith but you know the next 10 or 11 days is really going to test my patience potentially um and i'm looking forward to transfer deadline day